Come have fun with us and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, I'm Rick. And I'm Anna. And welcome to our review of the 1936 movie, The Story of Louis Pasteur. For those of you who don't know, this is me and Anna's bucket list channel, a channel in which we try to realize the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. So many of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of those goals is for us to watch every movie that was nominated at the Academy Award for Best Picture from 1927 to 2028. As of now, Anna, we have watched a total of 72 movies. That's a lot. That's a lot. And there is still so much left. Oh yeah, hundreds yes. and hundreds. Mm -hmm. The latest of these 72 movies, of course, being the story of Louis Pasteur. This Warner Brothers movie was released on February 22nd, 1936, and tells a dramatized version of the life of Louis Pasteur. In it, French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur is on a quest to cure the ailment of the 19th century. But he is thwarted at every turn by skeptical fellow scientists and doctors, chief amongst them Dr. Charbonnet. He draws scorn when he supports the germ theory, advocating that doctors should wash their hands and sterilize their instruments before working on patients. But Pasteur perseveres, and when anthrax start plaguing France, he alone seems to hold the key to solving this epidemic. He alone, Anna, he alone had the key, So alone. Yeah, to solving this whole thing. I mean, this idea that he alone against everyone else, of course he had assistance and his family on his side, but he alone was the one in the right, is of course when I said, uh, and the synopsis there, a dramatized version, that's uh, one part that is heavily dramatized. You know, there were other people around the time who were espousing these theories. You know, he wasn't just the one guy screaming hey wash the, your hands yeah exactly and everybody was like never <laughs> but yeah regardless of historical accuracy because we could do a whole thing about that but the movie is a movie to entertain or to show you the the story of Lipa. so do you enjoy this movie so i found the story very interesting mm -hmm. educational yeah that's what i meant to entertain it's simultaneously there to entertain and also to educate you about the life of this man who we've heard about how familiar were you about uh, oh yeah Louis i've, heard, I've yeah. heard of him before yeah, exactly. definitely mm -hmm. for sure yeah i learned in school so as i was saying very interesting very educational very boring oh you think so i mean okay fine i exaggerated it's not very boring it's not captivating it didn't draw me in for the most part i was very little like actually intrigued by what's happening at some point towards the end of the movie but for most of the movie i was like mm, Okay. <laughs> it felt like this movie wanted to walk on this like edge between historical a historical movie w to the point where it's also just a a retail of the events that happened and an actual movie that is supposed to be, you know, entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it was misstepping at every step, like you from think? one side to another. Oh. That's how it felt like to me. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, I, I enjoyed this movie. Okay, yes. tell me about uh, it. So we've had this debate with Cleopatra with other movies uh, and the general like historical movies. Should they be historically accurate? I think that, and it's always very hard to establish that unless it is the clearly stated intent to be historically accurate, then we shouldn't hold them up to that. Now, how do you know what the intent was when they made the movie? That's a whole other ball of wax. So I don't know whether the director, the production house, what they were trying to do was to like stay like this is how it happened and we should do it like this. Or whether they were like, oh, let's get inspired by the life of this man. And also add a little love story there. Add a villain there, you know. People were obviously you know, dramatized and sensationalized for the sake of having a villain in the movie. Uh, Dr. Charbonnet being the main one of them. Like, he's so ridiculous and his refusal to listen to anything that uh, Pasteur has to say. I also feel like uh, Charbonnet, like a lot of the other uh, doctors who are members of the, the academy, not very scientific-seeming men. Yeah. Where every time a theory was being proposed, they were like, there's no way. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> if you're a man of science, you will always... Or you should be intrigued by the idea of it's a possibility. Let's yeah, see. Let's try. Let's try. Exactly. Mm. What was the intent here? Were they intending to be historically accurate? If they did, there is some misstep here. One of the main uh, misstep, of course, is one that happens with 
almost every biographical movie, the main character, the subject, is only presented in one light, you know, as the good guy. Which right. there are some controversies uh, surrounding the character of Louis Pasteur in real life, you know, him attributing certain discoveries uh, to himself when, you know, there were other people participating, etc. Stuff like that. Yeah. You know, none of that is mentioned here. But we're not talking about that. I'm going to assume that the goal here is to be entertaining while also educating you a little bit about this guy. And that worked for me. I mean, it worked in that sense. I don't have a problem with that. I feel like the balance was good between it showing a part of history and it just being an entertaining movie. Mm -hmm. It's just that the movie was not that entertaining to me. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. that's my only issue. It is not a surprising movie. Nothing that ever happens is surprising. Not because you know where it gon it's going to end, but because it's so telegraphed, you know? The way the movie starts, there can be no other end than him proving them wrong. You know? And so you're just waiting the whole time for him to prove them wrong. Right. At several points in time. You know? But still... I was in for the ride. I was in for like, oh, how is he going to prove them wrong now? Is the sheep experiment going to work? We know it works, but still. Yeah, see, th that's the thing. It didn't really catch me in that sense. Yeah. And I got to say, like, one of the main reason I'm saying that I enjoyed this movie is Paul Muni. And so let's get right into it. Let's get into the actors and the people surrounding this movie. The story of Louis Pasteur was directed by William Darto, who also directed A Midsummer Night's Dream. Main actor, so I was mentioning him a second ago, Paul Muni as Louis Pasteur. To me, he is the anchor of this movie. He is why this movie works, in my opinion. We saw him. You might be surprised. Will I? And I'm a fugitive from a chain gang. Okay, as who? The main character. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I am surprised. Uh-huh. So let me tell you about this. In this movie, Muni's makeup skills were used for him to play Louis Pasteur. And there's a story behind this. As a teenager, he developed uh, skills in creating makeup, which enabled him to play much older character. So much so that when he was 12, he played the role of an 80-year-old man. 80? Yeah. 80? 80. Oh, wow! That was the first thing that I thought of when you said that. I thought, wait, the, that character in uh, I'm a Fuji from a Chain Gang is much, much younger. younger. Yeah. Even then, like, it doesn't look like him. Like, yeah. he could have said, oh, he I looks mean, like him with thought, a beard. Right. But no. It wouldn't, I thought maybe it doesn't look like him just because of the beard. But yeah, even if you think, like, of even the, the way his eyes look and yeah. everything, it's, oh, I can't see it at all. <laughs> wow. I'm shocked. That I'm, is crazy. I'm really yeah. shocked. So it's not only the way uh, Paul Muni managed to get into the character through the costume and the makeup, but also, like, his whole demeanor, his whole, like, I think he was... Yeah, it's uh, wonderfully completely played. Different. Yeah, that's true. And I have to say, despite the fact that the story as a whole was, as I said, not that captivating to me, I did enjoy the main character a mm. lot. I feel like the actor did a good job. He was very convincing. He was. You could feel all the soul and determination put into that character. And we're not the only one years later to uh, appreciate. Uh, his acting in that movie, even back then, he was recognized, so he won yes. the Academy Award oh, for Best Actor. Writing for The Spectre in 1936, Graham Greene characterized Paul Muni as the greatest living actor. Oh, wow. Praise. That's, that's a lot. Praise from the critic. The greatest living actor. Yeah. Oh, that's something. I wonder if we'll see him somewhere. I would love to. Now that you told me this, I mean, I had already liked so much his uh, interpretation in I'm a Fiji from a chain gang. I liked his interpretation here too, obviously. But now that you tell me he's the same actor, I'm like, I want to see him do more. Do more, yeah. Like what? It feels like he could play anything right now. That's crazy. What yeah. else can you do? Bring it on, yeah. Yes. Because there are other people in this movie. We have uh, Josephine Hutchinson as Marie Pasteur, the wife, who in real life was uh, an assistant to him. We see in the movie a little bit that she helps from time to time, but it doesn't feel like she was that in Involved, but uh, her biography really? says that she was uh, okay. more involved. Than I feel like her. in the movie we mainly just see her as the wife. Yeah, I mean she makes some comments here and there, you know, like, oh, did you try this? You know, but... We also have Anita Louise as Annette Pasteur, the daughter, who we've also seen in A Midsummer Night's Dream and Anthony Edwards as Maria. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, didn't you recognize her? No, I didn't, but now that you told me, I can see it. Mm. What do you think of her? She's not there a lot, but... I mean, I feel like her presence is felt enough. I, I really like her character. I felt like it was very fitting within the story, you know, as the, the daughter of 
this scientist. She didn't feel too plain, you know. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel that involved in the sense that it didn't seem like she had anything to do with all the scientific yeah. side of it. But she did seem to be understanding enough of what is going on to be able to support her father. Though so there like is that. that one scene, you know, when she comes in and she's like, oh, where's my husband? Because her husband is one of the assistants. Ah, and like, right. Oh, uh, why can't uh, he be home more often? He's always working, blah, blah, blah. You know, which is an uh, understandable sentiment, though when you realize that what they're working on could save million, like calm down. Right. But still, it would have been an understandable avenue to take with the character. Nothing happens out of that. Yeah, know? I feel like they show that. And then in the next scene, when they show her, she tells her husband like, oh no, you have to do it. <laughs> Go whatever. back to work. Everything's yeah. fine. Like, you know, make up your mind. Yeah, yeah, I had forgotten about that. You're right. It was introduced there and I was sure it was going to go somewhere or it was going to be a plot point. But then never mentioned again. Like you said, the next scene, she says the total opposite. And then the only time she's even mentioned again is when she's giving birth and we don't even see her. Right. Speaking of her husband, he's played by Donald Woods. So he plays uh, Dr. Jean Martel, who we've also seen in Anthony Adverse. To me, he wasn't that memorable, you know, and I mean, the biggest thing I remember from his character was getting told off in the beginning by a pastor. Yeah. You know, when he's talking badly about the Charbonnet and the pastor was like, no, he's your superior. Be respectful, young man. His character was not that interesting as a whole. And I especially felt that in the scene when he asked for the hand of uh, the daughter, Annette, mm -hmm. I don't know what they were trying to write there, you know, with his character. Mm -hmm. What was that? That's yeah. not how you propose. I mean, the whole introduction of the love story, which is, you know, movie, for the movie. Yeah. Felt like, you know, should have had either more of a place in the movie or none at all. It's kind of just there in the background happening. It feels like it's going to seep in into the main storyline at one moment when uh, Martel is pleading for uh, the experiment to happen and everybody's like, oh, no, you're just saying that because you're in love with the daughter. And then you think, oh, that's going to become a plot point. But no, it doesn't really. But I guess it serves the purpose of getting her pregnant so that we get the ending. Yeah, but I mean, she could have gotten pregnant by anyone. Else. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't have to be this guy. It didn't have, like, the love story didn't have to be... To be on screen. That's yeah. true. And then, of course, rounding up our cast, uh, we have Fritz Leber as Dr. Charbonnet, who is the villain, who is the representation... Not, is he really a villain? He's not really the villain. He's the antagonist. <laughs> He's the antagonist, He's yeah. the representation of everyone who's skeptical of Pasteur and also actively goes against him. Probably mix of different historical figures who might have been detractors of the work of Pasteur. I thought that he worked. I liked him too, yeah. yeah. I feel like he was a good character. That scene when he deliberately injects himself with the, the virus, uh -huh. that was so good. Yeah. Like, uh, interesting, very powerful, I feel, on his part, and also well and, played. And it shows also that he's not just all thought. Because a lot of these other uh, doctors and scientists, you know, they're just like, oh, preposterous, impossible, blah, 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 but they have nothing to bring. He's saying, no, I don't believe you. I think you're full of S. <laughs> and I'm going to prove it by infecting myself with all these germs because they do nothing. They're just germs. Right. You know, like he really believes what he's saying. He's not just like against the new thing. He's thinking like, no, 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 I'm right. With our 2020 eyes, we look back on it and we're like, what a fool. What an <laughs> idiot. Of course, the disease is caused by bacteria and germs. Yeah, that's but, all like, they are. Yeah. Really. <laughs> But with a man of his time, he's thinking that there is no way that can be true. So it's a danger not only to him because he injects himself with the virus, but to the world at large, because if he succeeds in discrediting Pasteur... Then the then, world will never know to protect yeah, themselves against exactly. the germs and viruses and bacteria. To, and imagine what the world would look like today if we didn't protect ourselves against oh, bacteria. Let's not even go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because the whole movie... You know, he keeps telling doctors, like, wash your hand, clean your instruments. And it seems so obvious. Like, I yeah. was l watching the movie and thinking, what? This guy doesn't even wash his hands before he operates on a patient? Right. Also, <laughs> like, at some point we see him, he drops a tool, like, on the floor. That's he another picks doctor, it, yeah. He picks it up and, like, does like this yeah. and puts it back. I'm like, you're not going to use that on someone, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, come on! <laughs> Difficult time to live in. But, yeah, this is our cast. As I said before, Paul Muni amongst them was recognized at the Academy Award, but the movie was also recognized for other stuff. Let's look at the list Ooh, here. Yeah. It was nominated for Outstanding Production, also nominated for Best Actor, Paul Muni, which he won, Best Original Story, 
Tia Collin and Sheridan Gibney, which they won. Okay. And Best Adaptation for the Same Duo, which they also won now. How can this be How an can original? It be best Original Story and Best Adaptation? I was wondering the same question. I looked up the page for Best Original Story. This is a, an award that is not given anymore. And on the page, it just said Best Story, which would make more sense. Okay. If so best story in general. Best story is different than best original story. So I'm not sure if someone knows in the comment section if what exactly the award was called. Was it best original story? And if so, how can it be original and an adaptation at the same time? Like I feel like maybe it's original in the sense that the idea of the movie is original, but it's an adaptation from real events. From the life of someone, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they won both... Uh, so in total, they won three awards. Three awards out of four oh, nominations. Wow. This was a movie that was... Very well liked at the time, uh, very well reviewed, and Paul Muni even reprised this role in two radio play versions of the movie, one in 1936 and one in 1946. Any other moment or elements of the movie you'd like to talk about that we haven't touched on? Um, no, I think we pretty much touched on everything that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I would agree with that uh, on my side too, so I'm gonna ask you, would you recommend this movie? Would I recommend this? Here's the thing. I feel like it is very interesting as a story like, to know what happened. Um, of course, as we said, it's an adaptation. It's not 100% uh, historically accurate. But it does make for a very intriguing story. I feel like the movie as a whole, for whatever reason that I cannot really put my finger on, failed to capture me enough to for me to be able to say like, oh, this movie, it will be like, you know, so exciting, so whatever. I wouldn't speak against it, you know, if someone wants to watch it. I feel like it's an interesting enough movie and it has an interesting enough story. But I wouldn't really recommend it to because I people. have to watch a movie. Yeah. yeah. I would say that I recommend it, you know, and I don't feel like you were saying like, oh, you have to watch it. And uh, Like, I don't feel that strongly about it. I just mm. think like it was a good movie. I was entertained by the rivalry between Chabonnet and Pasteur by, of course, Muni as his pastor the whole time he was playing the role. I was captivated by his performance. And in general, just you know, learning a bit more about some of these events. So yeah, I'd recommend it. I feel like we have very different uh, op- or somewhat different opinions of uh, our reception of the movie. I'm curious to see how that will translate in the ranking. Yes, because now it is time to rank. So for every Academy Award year, we rank the movies that were nominated for Best Picture this is the ninth Academy Award year, and as of now, our ranking is at number four, Anthony Adverse. At number three, Libeled Lady. At number two, Mr. Deed Goes to Town. And at number one, Dudsworth. I'm gonna ask you, I guess, where would you put that? Where would I put it? Yeah. Okay, don't we go like one by one like that? I would definitely put it above Anthony Adverse. Yeah, we agree on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Libeled Lady? What would you do? <laughs> so Lie Bold Lady and this movie, I feel like in a similar fashion, the main element that is to praise is the main character and its portrayal. You know, Powell on one side and uh, Muni here. Thinking back on a Lie Bold Lady as a whole versus this movie, I tend to give it to Pastor, the story of the Pastor, more so than Lie Bold Lady. Just because Powell to me seemed like it was the one element in that movie. I feel like... The story of Louis Pasteur as a whole will be, you know, over time a more memorable movie to me yeah. than Libel Lady because it has more elements that are easy to understand in the movie but interesting at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, the rivalry between uh, the two men of science. You know, just his quest to get the uh, cure for different diseases. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like as a whole, it will be a more memorable movie. And for that reason, I would also probably give it to Le Pasteur. Yeah, that's probably a better way of wording it. Because even now that I think about it, that's not true that Powell was the only highlight and uh, libel lady. The main uh, female role was also very well played. It's just that as a whole, I feel it's not as... It's not as memorable, you know? I I had to take a few seconds to like (laughs) think back on the movie and be like, oh no, actually there were other elements, you know? It doesn't jump at you. I wouldn't go higher though. I wouldn't go above yeah, me uh, Mr. Deed or Dudsworth. Oh, definitely not. But even yeah. Mr. Deed, I feel like it's a a better movie than this one. Also in terms of like how captivating it is, story-wise, character development-wise, everything. I feel like it's just 
It's better. Better. Yeah. The new ranking is now at number five. Anthony Adverse at number four. Lightboard Lady at number three. The Story of Louis Pasteur at number two. Mr. Deed Goes to Town. And at number one, Dodsworth. I feel like so far we have a year with very strong lead actors. Yes. Yeah, oh, definitely. Would you, would yeah. you, wouldn't you say that? I feel like even in Anthony Adverse, which is a movie which we didn't have a lot of good things, or rather we had a lot of bad things to say about, mm-hmm. I feel like still the, the One of the actor, best things that we said about was the, the actor. Was, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I feel like that stays consistent. A good observation there. Let's see if it keeps going that way as we watch more movies. Of course, if you want to be there for those movie reviews, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you did. Comment in the comment section below. Have you ever seen the story of Lee Pasteur? If so, what did you think of this movie? Let us know. And don't forget that this channel is a bucket list channel. And so we do a lot of different things, not only movie reviews. We do travel videos, anime videos, games, self-growth, etc. So go check some of that stuff out. And don't forget that if you yourself have a goal or a dream that you'd like to realize, take that first step.